What's up everybody, once again my name is Matt and welcome back to Let's Play Ocarina Time 3D. In the last episode we started some side quests, went back in time 7 years to become Young Link, and in this episode, well, we're gonna keep on side questing. So now that we're Young Link, we have more of the teleportation songs, we can pretty much go anywhere we want, as fast as we want. However, the first place that I want to go to is Zora's River, and unfortunately there's no song that will take me close there fast enough, so we're gonna have to do it the old fashioned way and just hoof it over there. Now the reason why I'm going to Zora's River is because if you remember way, way back in the early episodes of this project, uh, we saw some frogs in Zora's River that were just sort of staring at us oddly, and we couldn't play the ocarina for them then, however we couldn't actually finish up this entire side quest, you need the Song of Storm, so you need all six non-teleportation ocarina songs to actually do this. But every time you play the ocarina for them, they will give you 50 rupees, and that brings up my second reason why I was sort of putting this off. We didn't have the giant's wallet, so I didn't really want to waste those rupees, although we are actually going to waste those rupees anyways, because I already have a full wallet, so I guess it didn't really matter that much in the end anyways. But it's not that big of a deal, because we're already late in the game, and we don't really need rupees for anything, and the things that we do need rupees for don't cost that much, so we should be fine throughout the rest of the game. The reason why I'm doing this now is because upon completion, these frogs will actually give us two pieces of hearts, so that's kind of awesome, right? That's like two out of the seven that we need, so there'll be five left after this. Not too shabby. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is play one of the ocarina songs, just to show it off, and then I'll cut until I play the sixth song and get the first piece of heart. Young lad, you play that ocarina well. Hmm, that melody is so fine, Ribbit. We should all practice it, Ribbit. Take rubies as a souvenir. If you come up with another nice melody, please drop by and play it, Ribbit Ribbit. And there you go, 50 rupees. So I'm gonna play the other ocarina songs and I'll see you in a second. Wow, that melody is so cool. Singing in the pond, just singing in the pond. Oh, what a feeling! Please take this as a token of our froggish gratitude. Alright, see you! And with that, we get our first piece of heart. Not too bad. Alright, so before we leave though, let's pull the ocarina one more time. Look at us, we're all huge frogs. We're the world famous fabulous five froggish tenors. That's quite the tongue twister. Make us jump so we can eat the bugs flying above us. Okay, now this is one of the more annoying mini-games. Basically what's gonna happen is a butterfly will appear above one of the frogs and you need to hit the corresponding note on your ocarina. The layout of the frog is exactly the same as the layout of the ocarina buttons on the bottom screen on the 3DS version. This was much harder on the N64, but it's not that bad. Thankfully the notes are not random and they're the same every single time, so I'm kind of going to cheat here. I actually wrote down the correct pattern of notes, so I'm just gonna play it as fast as I possibly can. And hopefully we can just get this piece of heart. So there we go, young boy, you did great! Perfect! We are stuffed! Would you take this as a token of our gratitude? And there we go! We got our second piece of heart. Kind of a hollow victory since I cheated, but hey, I'll take it anyways. So what I'm gonna do now is actually play the Bolero Fire. I want to teleport into Death Mountain Crater. There's some stuff we can do in there. And of course, since we are Young Link, we can use our Goron Tunic, and if we stay here too long, well, we'll just, uh, burn up. But, there's a soft soil spot right here, and you know what that means, but before we do anything, I actually need to clone my bugs. We will need to use bugs, I think, one more time after this, so... We're almost done with them, but they're still useful to us. So, of course, we're gonna plant a bug, get a skeleton, then we're gonna plant a magic bean. That magic bean, when we come back as Adult Link, will actually take us to that second piece of heart, that's in Death Mountain Crater that I pointed out, but we couldn't get the first time we were here. Let's just put this bug in the hole. And get ourselves another gold skeletula. Bug. Bug, go in the hole. There you go. Thank you. And now, skeletula. That took a little while, but finally we got it. Alright, so now let's go and plant our magic beans. 
And you'll become a big plant someday, my friend. Uh, now what we're gonna do is actually play the Nocturne of Shadow and teleport down to Kakariko. We need to make our way to the other side of Death Mountain Crater, except we can't get there because we don't have access to any of the Adult Link items. So unfortunately for us, we have to go all the way back around to the entrance near where the Great Fairy was. Because there's something on that side of the Death Mountain Crater that I want to go collect. So, that being said, I'll do us all a favor and I'll just cut out the travel. So, I'll see you guys over there. Alright, and we came all this way for one thing. So, inside the Death Mountain Crater, check it out. We've got a wooden box and inside that box there's a gold skeletal. So, let's just grab this bad boy. Now that we've got him, there's pretty much nothing else we need to do in the Death Mountain Crater, so we'll leave for now. We'll come back a little bit later as Adult Link to pick up that second piece of heart. For now, we actually want to play the Nocturne of Shadow again and teleport back down to Kakariko. See, we're already getting a ton of use out of this song, and it is one of the harder teleportation songs to play, so forgive me if I stumble a little bit while playing it and try to remember it. But we want to go back down to Kakariko and actually correct something in the flow of time itself. If you remember correctly, uh, when we were Adult Link, we talked to the guy in the windmill after he raised Dompy, and he taught us the Song of Storms. But he also told us that someone who looked like us and had an ocarina like us taught him the Song of Storms. So that was a time paradox, because we didn't actually know the Song of Storms to teach it to him, so he taught us a song that we didn't even know that we taught him, which doesn't make any sort of sense. So in order to fix the entire flow of time and correct this time paradox, we need to go back into the windmill and play the Song of Storms for the crazy windmill guy. That way, when he teaches it to us seven years from now, it'll have actually have happened then, and it'll sort of make sense. If you understood that, congratulations, you understand quantum physics or something like that, I don't know. Anyways, let's just go and play the song for him. Oh no, the windmill's going all haywire. What have you done, Link? Ah, and the water on the well lowered. I wonder what's down there. Go around, go around, go around. What? It's going way too fast! Yeah, we kind of broke the everything here. So let's go and check out that well. If you remember the first time we were in Kakariko as a dog link, we talked to that crazy old lady. And she told us about someone who had an eye that could see the truth and that it was in the bottom of the well or something like that. So, so why don't we try and find that? Let's go. Under the well. Under the well. It smells better than an old sweater. Under the well. <laughs> what am I doing? So here we are in the bottom of the well. This is essentially Young Link's version of the Ice Cowers, except way, way easier. There's like three things that you gotta do down here. It's really not that hard. The only thing that I really find annoying in this area is that we don't have access to our adult items. So we have to fight everything the old fashioned way and the boomerang does absolutely nothing. I have no idea why I use that. It just stuns the skeletal, so that's not gonna help me out much. What I want is my slingshot. Alright, come on skeletal. Turn around please. Skeletal. Anytime now. If you wanna work with me, that'd be nice. There we go, alright, come on. And of course you take two hits with the slingshot, not one. I should have remembered that. We're a lot of weaker as young Link, I always forget. Oh, and hey look, a dead guy! Well, isn't that just so inviting? He was probably poisoning the Kakariko water supply too. But you can actually talk to these guys with Navi. I can hear the spirits whispering in this room. Look for the Eye of Truth. That's what they're saying. Alright, well, we'll go look for the Eye of Truth, I guess, but... It doesn't seem like we can really go anywhere now, does it? Except we can go directly through this wall. What? I know, right? So crazy. We can just walk through walls now. What are we? Some kind of superhero? So the bottom of the well, besides looking gross, disgusting, and dirty, it's also infested with giant green bubbles. All this is going into the Kakariko water supply, mind you, so yeah, don't drink the water in Kakariko. But this area is very, very easy. To get the item in this area, 
you really gotta do like two things. So let's go all the way to the back of the bottom of the well here, and there's actually another little panel that you can read with Navi. But now we got this jerk skull on the way. Oh, and now the bubble's back. Isn't that just fun? Get out of here, you stupid flying skull. You look dumb. All right, anyways, let's go read the panel. This wall, it says something here. Danger above. That's what it says. And that's, of course, just alerting you to that skull right there, which you can easily avoid. What you want to do is come back here near this Triforce on the ground, target this Goron that's spewing water, and similar to the Water Temple, if we play Zelda's Lullaby, it will change the water level. But that's a bonus song, so that is not going to do anything, and I'm an idiot. Let's try this again one more time, and let's actually target the statue first. I mean, I guess opponent song and Zelda's Lullaby are kind of similar, so cut me a break. Alright, and the water has receded back down to the bottom. So what we're gonna do now is head back towards the beginning of the bottom of the well and stupid skull to I should have killed you when I had the chance. But back at the entrance, there's that hole we sort of fell into while I was trying to target that bubble. Down there, there's actually a passageway that we can crawl through. Uh, oh yeah, there's also a chest down here, but I believe this is just a bomb restock, so it's really nothing important. Yeah, so nothing important. Instead, we're gonna crawl through this hole. Now, we're actually almost done with the bottom of the well, believe it or not. Like, the next room from this room is actually where we get the item that we came down here for, but there's still stuff to do in the bottom of the well after we get the item. But yeah, it's very, very short and very easy. Well, let's just take care of this skeleton real quick. Honestly, I should have been jump attacking these guys from the start. It's just much easier to kill them that way. So, right through this door is one of the creepiest mini-bosses in any Zelda game. We have a bunch of these floating, dead, zombie hands in here, and what you want to do is actually get caught by one of the hands. That'll cause the main boss to appear. It's kind of a weird concept for a boss, because you have to get hit by the hands for this guy to appear, so... While you're, you know, being attacked by the hands, you sort of feel helpless, and... While that's happening, this crazy, weird, gelatinous creepy guy with an elongated neck and a weird face is trying to attack you like overall this boss isn't even that hard like all you gotta do is just um wait for him to attack you and then hit his face a few times when it sort of bends down to try and attack you like you can do this entire boss without taking any damage it's really really easy except it's just such a weird creepy boss because you feel helpless while you're getting attacked by these hands and if he spawns really really close to you it can actually be really really dangerous but yeah, just get close to him, wait for his skull to sort of come close to you, and then just slash at him with your sword a few times. I think he takes like three or four rounds of you just like flailing your sword at him like that before he goes down. But as you can see, I am not the best at this particular boss fight. Like, I just get caught by the hands a lot and can't seem to get out of them. Like, I've seen people get out of the hands a lot faster than I do it, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I think you're supposed to just like flail and press buttons as much as you can to get out of them faster, but I don't know, maybe it's a timed thing. But this should be the last round of hits, so if you want to put your face in my sword, I'd gladly take it off for you. Oh, you're dead already. Well, that was easy. Seriously, that boss is just really, really disgusting looking. But hey, a big chest. Well, that can only mean one thing. I wonder what's inside. And we found the Lens of Truth. Be sure to try and use it outside the well. Seeing the truth will cost magic power. Listen. Hmm, what could this be? It looks like a lens. I wonder if it lets you see things better. Anyways, this place is dank and creepy. Let's get out of here. That's a good idea, Navi, except we're not done with the bottom of the well just yet. There's a few more things to collect. Now that we have the Lens of Truth, we can actually access a few more hidden areas in the well, but... We are running a little bit low on time, so I think we'll take care of the bottom of the well in the next episode and demo the Lens of Truth. So, once again guys, my name is Matt, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.